With the fast-paced development of performance-intensive applications, the demand for faster and faster computing performance and efficiency grows greater by the day. In the past, Moore's law was in full effect and CPUs were sufficient. People could just wait and their applications were getting faster at 50% per year, so they didn't feel the compelling need to design a domain-specific piece of hardware to get more performance. They could just wait and CPUs would come with more performance. Now that CPUs are really not getting any faster, um, you know, people feel the need that they have to design these accelerators. It's the only way they're going to get the performance. A domain-specific accelerator can dramatically improve performance and efficiency way beyond the capabilities of CPUs. So in our Darwin accelerator, for example, we get an efficiency gain of 26,000 by replacing a CPU with a little engine that is specialized just to do the dynamic programming that's at the core of bioinformatics algorithms. And then because we have such an efficient core, we can easily put 4,000 of them down, and that gives us a speed up of 4,000 due to parallelism. Our little core is actually faster than a CPU as well, so we get another factor of about 40 um, speed up from parallelism. So the combined speed up is a factor of about 150,000, um, but most of that actually comes from parallelism. A little bit of it comes from the specialization. Another key advantage of accelerators is its ability to significantly reduce overhead. Many people don't realize it, but um, a typical um, CPU spends 99.98% of its energy on overhead and only about 0.02% of its energy actually doing useful work. So if you have, for example, an add instruction, a 32-bit add instruction takes about 64 femtojoules. Um, I should say, doing the add operation itself takes about 64 femtojoules. Executing the instruction takes 250 picojoules, instruction fetch, decode, all of the speculation that goes on, reading registers, storing registers, all of that bookkeeping um, takes 4,000 times as much energy as the payload actually doing the add. And it's because that overhead is so high that we're able to get great efficiency out of building domain-specific engines because we can put just that adder down and not burden it with all that overhead of having to fetch and decode instructions and the like. With the significant reduction in overhead and cost of operation, the area and power of accelerators are dominated by memory. Because of this, um, you know, finding ways of reducing global memory access is a key to good accelerator design, to doing that co-design to get, to get good performance. It also means that compression is very important. A lot of people um, think about memory compression and say, no, that takes too many operations to do uh, we won't come out ahead. With the accelerator, you can build a little compression engine and make the comp compression very cheap. And if you can get you know, even 2x or 4x reduction in memory um, by compressing, you get that 2 or 4x improvement in performance because you were bottlenecked um, by that memory. If developers know that accelerators are memory limited, this means they can easily estimate the cost of the accelerator just by counting up the bits of memory in it. And that actually winds up being a really good estimate. Later on, after you've designed all the special purpose cores, you'll get an accurate cost, but it's very close to the cost you got you know, very quickly by just you know, counting bits and, and uh, estimating from there. The, the demand for more hardware performance is insatiable. And the only way we can meet that demand is by building really efficient accelerators. Learn more in the July 2020 Communications of the ACM in the contributed article, Domain-Specific Hardware Accelerators.